build a YouTube channel. So there are people out there, they've always thought about creating a YouTube channel. Um, perhaps they're looking to make a little bit of uh, side money or to replace their full-time income. And um, so they've been thinking about it. And what I'm going to uh, do here is encourage you guys to actually move forward with this. Now, um, I am hearing a little bit of an echo or feedback. Do you have anything going on in, on your uh, speakers there? Um, While you're looking at that. So uh, let's jump into this. So uh, if you're thinking about creating a YouTube channel, um, I would definitely recommend to define your your niche. I want to make sure I pronounce that right. It's not niche, I've been told. It's niche, which I don't know, Kurt, does that sound French to you? Sounds niche to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if it comes from French, but um, so a niche is like your, um, the thing that you want to specialize in, the thing that you want to be all about. Okay, so on this channel, I've always been all about uh, Microsoft Power Apps and providing training for Power Apps. This is the one video I've sort of broken out of the mold and said, "Ah, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm not doing anything else. I'm just releasing this video because a lot of, um, if I'm not getting questions about uh, Power Apps, I'm getting questions about, hey, could you give me a little bit of advice of, of starting a channel? And I tell you. About two years ago when I started the channel, I didn't know anything. And over the two years, I've learned quite a bit. <laughs> and uh, defining my own niche was something that um, I, I really needed to hone in on. Um, it's really best if you're going to create a, a YouTube channel that you get extremely specific, as specific as you can be. And... Um, let me give you an example. So Microsoft Power Apps is a, is a product, a software development tool, as I would define it. Um, and But there's other things out there like Power Automate, there's Power BI, there's all kinds of related stuff, SQL Server, Dataverse. And um, it's good to sort of narrowing, narrow in on a niche. And then over time, you can sort of pull back a little bit. Um, now, I'm not... I'm not saying all this to say that I'm adding to my niche here on this channel. This channel will always be about Microsoft uh, Power Apps. Now, I might include some Power BI, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents. Uh, well, help me out, Kurt. What, what are the things are part of the Power Platform that we might possibly talk about? Some Dataverse stuff, maybe. Dataverse. Maybe some uh, SQL Server stuff, maybe. Absolutely. Uh, what's, what's, what's the new one? Uh, Power Apps portals became Power, Power Pages, pages. Right? Power, Power pages. pages. Yeah, and, and Microsoft might throw some things in there. Uh, maybe eventually, over I don't know, three to five years, maybe this channel will be about um, the Power Platform, <laughs> and there will be plenty to talk about. But right now, it's all about Power Apps. That's uh, what I know the most about. So um, here's some questions to ask yourself, Kurt. Um, and Kurt, I want you to be thinking about this yourself. I want you to think about creating a channel. Okay. I'm going to ask you these questions. What are you passionate about? Programming. Yeah. Programming. And talking. And talking. I'm pretty passionate <laughs> about talking. So you probably be good for a, a podcast. Maybe. Um, yeah. and, and, and what's great about YouTube, this is on, on point here with the topic of uh, YouTube is that now you can, you know, you can upload your videos, you can go live. There's all kinds of, you know, you have, you have YouTube shorts, but if you look at power apps where you have that little create button after you create your channel, one of them is a podcast. So you can create podcast episodes. Um, so I'm excited about that as well. So, um, yeah. What are you passionate about? What do you know a lot about? Okay. You could be passionate about something and not know, a lot about a topic. <laughs> I can decide I really like uh, Power BI, but as you guys found out, uh, what was it, a week or two ago, we had uh, Jessica Jolly on and she was the Power BI expert and I did not have uh, the place to even uh, try to explain anything about Power BI, at least not yet, hopefully eventually. But um, what are you passionate about? What do you know a lot about? What can you teach others? 
I believe it is my contention that everyone, each one of you that are watching uh, this video or series of videos, everybody has something you can teach others. And I think the older you become in life, the more you have to teach. Okay. But um, if you're like my, uh, my son, uh, Blake or Braden, they, um, you know, they could start a YouTube channel. What could they start about? I mean, they're only what, 18 years old, but what, what, do, what would they have to teach? Well, I could tell you they could probably teach me all day long about a video game. Okay, when they were nine or 10 years old, I, I was showing them the video games I was playing and they I was like the expert for them. But what's funny is they've continued to play some of these games as well as me. So one of the games that I like is World of Warcraft. I've played it over the years. Um, and I still play it a little bit from, from time to time. And, um, but they know more about the game than I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it doesn't matter what age, what walk of life you have. Don't think for one moment, you don't have anything to teach. I agree. I, yeah. I would like to actually throw out something else out there that if, if you have the passion to learn something, whatever that is, you have that same passion to teach. And if you want to learn something, you teach it and then you're going to really learn something, you know? And Absolutely. so I think that'd be a great way to start an adventure with a YouTube channel is find something that you want to learn that you're really passionate about wanting to learn and start digging into it. And then you're just sharing what you learn. And when you share what you learn, you're teaching. That's what you're doing. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I remember you, you telling me that years ago, uh, Kurt, when you were mentoring me, help me get my first job. I remember you saying that if you, well, if you want to learn something, you teach it. And uh, it's one of those, I've, I've, I should probably write all these Kurtisms down that uh, it's funny. Cause sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll say something. And I'm like, Kurt, you actually taught me that. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you've forgotten more than. Uh, it's, it's, what's really <laughs> funny is when I'm sitting here going, well, Darren, how do I do that? And you go, well, Kurt, you're the one that taught me that. It's hilarious. Um, I think the other day you told me, Darren, I think I've forgotten more than I know. Or <laughs> I, I forgot more um, than I'll ever know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, once you know your niche, you can start creating content that will appeal to a specific audience. Um, there's not really any topic that would be appropriate for everybody in the world to see, you know, and, and when you learn how to write or create content, that's really the first thing, uh, even talking to marketing professionals, um, they'll ask you, what's your avatar? My avatar. Yeah. Who are you creating, uh, the power apps videos for? I'm like people that want to learn power apps. And they're like, no, give them a name. Like what, um, what walk of life are they from? And I'm like, they're all from all walks of life. They're like, no, describe to me, the perfect student that, let's say, um, you know, Kurt, you've told me that I was your, um, you never told me that, you never told me that I was your favorite student. You told me that I was your best student. <laughs> you might have been my favorite your... student too. You might have been my favorite one. <laughs> there was a couple of them that you were up there, but you might have been one of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so, um, <clears throat> Where was I going with that? <laughs> um, yeah. So, you, yeah, whenever you create any content, when, when you talk to a marketing professional, they're asking about your avatar and um, you, and they, they, they say, give them a, a name like Billy or um, Fred or, or something. And then like, um, you know, your YouTube content, is that for developers? I'm like, no, it's for anybody who want to learn, you know, power apps. They're like, no, you need to be more specific. Now you could have, um, different ways that you can market to market to that are different avatars. Like there's some people that watch my videos that are, uh, they want to become a freelancer. Okay. I don't know. I find that one probably the most exciting. Another exciting one is they want to actually write apps and power apps that they sell. They want to sell the software. Mm -hmm. And then you have some that are just looking to, to get a job. And then you have some that are um, they're wor working in a position and they just want to implement the technology uh, where they're currently at. So, you know, 
if I, if I were to create a piece of content, even within my channel, I feel it's like really specific. I can ask myself, this video that I'm creating, which one of my four or five avatars does this apply to? Okay. So this is the type of stuff that you want to be thinking about. I think there are YouTube channels, just about everything. Um, somebody told me there, there was somebody who created a channel about hula hooping with foam hula hoops at, you know, really specific, something you would never even think about. Um, so if you can think of something that you're passionate about, you can share some type of information about, um, I would encourage you to go for it. Now, if you, if it could end up being something that you could monetize in a way where you could, uh, you know, sell a course or, or sell some of your time, um, you know, that, that would be like a bonus. You can make money with YouTube. Um, so I was uh, going to get to that. It's on my list of, of things to talk about. Um, so you need to define your niche. Okay. So point number two, okay. Point number two is it takes just a few minutes to create your channel in YouTube. So get it done. Yeah, that's true. So let's see, let's see how long this would take us. So I have a link here that I'm going to share in the chat right here. And it's a little tiny URL. And then I'm going to show it here. Okay. Tinyurl.com slash create new channel. Now, if you already have, you probably already have a, a YouTube uh, channel. Just, I mean, not that you produce any content, but you're using YouTube to uh, just your channel to view other people's content. So if you need to like on something or subscribe, you need to log on to, to uh, YouTube, right? So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen here. I'm going to share this. And then so I've got, so I, I manage um, really just two channels here. Um, and then, uh, these are for different purposes here. I'm going to click on create a channel. Okay. So that link will sort of get you, sometimes it's sort of hard to find in the menu system in YouTube of how to get to that link. So that's why I created that link for you guys. And I have it there at the bottom of the screen, the lower left corner. Okay. So Kurt, we were talking about maybe creating a, a new channel here and you know what? What's great about this, Kurt, I would like to take this content we're creating tonight and actually make it the first content in this new channel. Okay. And um, Kurt and I, you were talking about, uh, you know, what do we, what type of thing do we want to do here? And I was thinking, I, I almost want like a little place that I could publish videos. Maybe the common denominator of little techie type of things, you know, and um, something you've always told me, it's like, Darren, you're, you're a, you're a power user, you know, and, yeah. and I don't feel like I'm a power user. And I, and I would say, well, you, you'll get there eventually. It's just a matter of doing something enough times and, and, you know, yeah. you'll, you'll get it in, in my opinion. But um, so I, I was thinking about creating a channel called um, power users. Okay. So a power user uh, might be interested in creating a YouTube channel. They might, really know office really well you know maybe they don't have anything to do with programming but they might want to dabble in scripting or databases or who knows maybe they do want to be a, a developer or, or something like that can you think of different types of content like let, let's let's do what we're practicing here kurt let's define our niche a little bit can you give okay. me any more ideas of what our, our niche will include here oh we're, now we're talking about the power the power user niche right so mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about, you're talking about maybe wanting to do some video editing, maybe learn a little bit about maybe some Camtasia products, type products. I like um, that. You know, maybe maybe uh, how to do, set up, um, you know, an environment where people can, like a social media type environment, like some, something like school or, or something like that, how to set that kind of stuff up, how to use um, programs like Calendly or program, you know, that keep track of bookings and, and, and whatnot. Um, there's just all kinds of things that I see that you do every day as a power user that you just run through just like, it's not anything. And I'm, I, I know for me looking at you using these things, thinking it could be really useful to have, have uh, a place for all that, you know, 
And I'm sure there's videos for all those things out there, but maybe there's not a vi video for all of those things together, a place for all those videos together, you know? So I like it. I yeah. love this. I, I love the element that you bring here, Kurt. I was thinking of powerful power users. Uh, what do you, what do you call that when you got a phrase where every letter has the same, uh, or every word has the uh, same letter. I, of I, I don't users. know. All I know is acronyms, you know, but. Automatopoeia um, or something like that, or is it called something else? I don't even well, I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure I, I learned it in elementary school at some point. Well, I tell you what, I don't Powerful know. power user. I don't know. That sounds cheesy. What about something like superpower users? I would sort of be cool. Super. Because I always want to have superpowers. You know, watch all the Marvel right. movies, and man, it'd be cool to be Iron Man and uh, be a super, superpower superstars. That's <laughs> okay. I like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I always want to have superpowers. Superpowers. So, I don't know. So, superpower users. I sort of like that. Right. All right. So, I think I'm going to stick with that one. You could um, you could put a lot of cool content with that. Like you could put like Marvel type people up there. You could. You can put like Hulk Hogan up there. You can do all kinds of stuff with that. <laughs> Curdy Hogan. Curdy Hogan. <laughs> By the way, guys, Kurt, um, <laughs> what were you doing today? Were you working out or something? Yeah. You were there in that studio, yeah. that background, with yeah. that microphone. And you, I think you had a bandana around your head. Yeah, I, I just got done doing a bunch of bench pressing and I got up from it and I went, woo. <laughs> that was hilarious. I love that. So now I'm going to have to create an alter ego called, um, I don't know. We'll have to think of another idea for that. Anyway. So, yeah, I'm going to say, I understand I'm creating a new Google account. Um, and uh, so I'm keeping an eye on the on the uh, the chat here, the live chat. So we got um, right now we got a few people out here uh, join the, the live stream here. So let's see what somebody has to say here. Latrice Mathis, all all iteration. Okay. It's called, oh, alliteration. Alliteration. The thing I said, automatopoeia. Latrice, um, I don't it looks like you might be a teacher. What is an automatopoeia? Is that is that a food or am I just imagining things? I've never heard of it before. <laughs> and Data is King is here. Hey, Data is King. Uh, Data is King is an access expert. Would you agree yeah. with that, Data is King? I think he actually... I think right now in his, his, his uh, current situation, he's taking a bunch of access database and getting them in the power apps. Data is King has a has a YouTube channel as well. So guys, check his, his channel out. Okay. That's right. And uh, all right. Very, very good. I'm excited here, guys. Superpower users. Um, okay. I'm going to click create. Let's see how this all works. It's been two all years since I've created yeah. a channel like this. What's that? Is a sound and writing. La Latrice just said what you were talking about. I can't even pronounce it. Automatopoeia is the automatopoeia. The sound and writing. Okay. Okay. Good stuff. Very cool. All right. So I've got let me situate ourselves here, and this is what I'm looking at here, and it says this channel does not exist. Okay. Well, let's see what we have here. I've got um, this little mini off the side. Now, I use a service called vidIQ. Some people use something like that. Other people use uh, TubeBuddy. I actually use both. If you see up here in the upper right corner, I'm, I'm guys, I'm divulging all my YouTube secrets here, guys. So uh, people pay big money to hear this. Wouldn't you agree to that, Kurt? That's right. That's right. I'm stealing that, guys. That's something that Kurt said from years ago and i use it all the time <laughs> i stole it yeah it was awesome years ago whenever i said that you would hear everybody's books closed and pens come out and they're taking notes at that moment <laughs> yeah kurt was my professor and if he said that it means that it's going to be on the exam yeah and yep. uh <laughs> Yeah, and data is king. I moved away from access, but keep trying to pull me back. That's hilarious. Yeah, everybody that, that has to deal with access may not want to be doing access. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, Kurt, that's that's what you and I uh, used as a data source back in the day. We used yeah. Microsoft Access for our databases. Yeah. So, yeah, Kurt and I uh, are very familiar with the, the, the pains of access. Kurt, I think one time you said, if you look at an access sideways or 
or wrong, it will become corrupt. Do you remember all that? Yeah. That when the yeah. access database would become corrupt. Yeah, you could you couldn't make direct eye contact with it. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's going on with this channel. Let me. Uh, so it's a brand new channel. Let's see if I if I go here if it, if I get anything new. Okay, so maybe just needed a moment to actually sort of create it. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm gonna move us around a little bit. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm gonna move my little uh, outline to the top here. Okay. So we're on point number two. It takes just a few minutes to create a YouTube channel, your channel on YouTube. So get it done. So we just did that. How many minutes did it take? Uh, minus all of our our blabbering here, or my blabbering here. Well, with the English lessons, it took uh, about two <laughs> minutes. Okay. So here we go, guys. We have a brand new channel. And um, of course, this is probably the easiest thing to do is just create the channel, right? So uh, I'm going to scroll all the way down and I'm going to click on settings. Let's see what's in settings. Okay. I guess maybe another way to put that would be it's the easiest thing to do to initialize a channel, right? Because there's a lot of things you got to do still to create it, right? That you're not done with. Um, That's true. Steps. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so these are the settings. So we have account, notifications, all this stuff here. Now, if I were to click back and get at all these menu things here, there's one item I'm looking for. It's called customize. And um, I'm going to, so if you're in YouTube, what you want to do is open up this little menu on the side and go to your videos. And it's going to open up the YouTube studio. Okay. Oh, welcome to the YouTube studio. So that's what I was trying to get at to show you guys. This is where the, the work begins. Okay. So I'm going to click continue. All right. And uh, we can upload videos, but we can look at all this um, information here. If we want, we want to go into customize, customize there on the side. Okay. And it's going to try to give me uh, helpful hints here that I don't want. <laughs> and um, so video, so if somebody comes to your channel um, you, what you could do is just hit record and say, hi, I'm Darren. And this is my YouTube channel where I talk about this or that. Hopefully you like it, whatever. And then you upload it. And then after it's uploaded, you just hit add and make it your YouTube channel. If you go to my YouTube channel right now, um, you'll see, I've got a little, uh, channel trailer where I just talk about myself and what the channel's about. I think people that are trying to decide if they want to subscribe to you or not, it's, sort of helpful for those to make that decision. Like the, is, what is this guy about? You know? Um, and then you got featured videos for returning subscribers. So a lot of times I'll go in here and make my most recent video, the featured video, but I always forget to do it. So if you go look at it right now, it's probably a video from a month ago. Um, so something that I would recommend on this, um, this thing about creating your channel and it just taking a few minutes you want to upload a little profile photo of yourself. Now, if you have a YouTube channel, you don't have to show your face, but you should probably create maybe a logo or something. If you go over to fiverr.com, you could probably have somebody create a little logo for you for $5 and, uh, and just tell them the colors that you want and what type of theme and they'll create it for you. And then you could just upload it here and it'd look sort of cool. You know, now the same thing could be done for a banner image. So if you go over to my YouTube channel, you're going to see, um, you know, a nice little banner where I got my name and, you know, a little bit of information about what the channel's about. So you really should do that. If, if you want your channel to be taken seriously, I would definitely recommend, especially those two parts, um, you know, uploading those two things. And then um, you've got a video watermark that you can have in the lower right corner okay and you might be seeing that here on this this video here and what's great about that is that you could have something that will um like if they click on it it'll actually allow them to subscribe okay so here's where you can name your channel okay you always rename it later to something else okay and you've got a handle so if you use a social media handle the same thing everywhere you could just put that there and I'd recommend typing up a, a description, okay? Mm -hmm. And you could add links to your website or your social media stuff. And, um, you know, I recommend putting your email address in here. 
because you never know. Somebody might reach out to you and say, hey, um, you do, you create video content for uh, power users and I create software that power users really love. Could you mention my software in your videos and I'll pay you $100,000 a month to do that or, or <laughs> some, some amount of, of money, probably not that high. <laughs> That was a little bit of a joke there, but um, so sometimes people see your content, they want to get a get a hold of you. So why not provide an email address so people can get a hold of you? I think that's a good idea. Okay, so at the very least, you you want to set up um, the branding and this basic information. And I'd say at that point, you're well on your way to um, having your channel set up and and get going. So that would just take a few minutes. Okay. So point number three um, is take imperfect action. What do you think about that, Kurt? Does that apply to anything else that uh, I know you and me, we're, we're probably a little bit of perfectionists and, and it's actually, this is actually hard advice for us to, to do. Um, would you agree with that? Yes. And it's becoming easier as yeah. we, as, as we fly by the seat of our pants. It's, <laughs> I think it's, I think it's, I think it's wonderful. Um, that's a wonderful thing to, I, I guess it's a saying, but it's a good rule too, right? Taking perfect action. Yeah. It means a lot. Yeah. I believe if you, there's so many things that you're waiting to get just right, that a lot of times they aren't right at the same time. And you could always use it as an excuse not to take action. And to yeah. keep procrastinating. And, yeah. you know, once you get your channel going um, after, you know, the first month or two, maybe you, maybe you've created five or 10 videos. Yeah. Okay. And you look back like, why didn't I do this earlier? You know, I, I think, I think videos, uh, it's a great example of that. Making videos is a great example of that because you want it to be perfect, which means when you get on camera, you got, you've got to be ready, right? So people will make their outlines and they'll polish their outlines and they'll think about what they're going to say and how they're going to say it. You know, um, I had some experience working with uh, live, live music. And mm -hmm. one thing you learn is you don't, you don't get to do retakes or anything and you've got to jump out there at the right time. So it, it's pretty much the same way with videos, right? When it's time to shoot, you just go and talk and, and it may not be perfect, but, It'll be better than not doing anything, right? Absolutely. It's good stuff. Absolutely. Man. Yeah. Um, I mean, if <laughs> I, I heard this example of if you waited for every traffic light to turn green before you left home to go to the grocery store, you'd probably go hungry. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, you're going to make mistakes, but that's part of the process. That's right. That's um, right. So I've got something here. Your first 100 videos are going to suck or they're not going to be great. <laughs> they might be absolutely awful. In fact, if you go here on this channel and you go back to, uh, so I'm talking about the Power Apps tutorial channel. If you do a search, if this is now on the, the Super Power Users channel, uh, just do a search for Darren Neese and Power Apps and you'll find the channel that I'm talking about. Uh, sort by when the, the videos were released. You look at some of my earliest videos, they, I, I cringe. I cringe if I pull them up. They're awful. Absolutely awful. So that's why I say, hey, your first 100 videos, I think I might be at 120 or 140 videos. Um, I say your first 100 because maybe it's just going to be your first 25 that aren't going to be that great. But I want you to remove that pressure off of yourself thinking yep. like, oh, I just did my 31st video and they're not performing well. No, produce a hundred videos and then, then analyze and say, what am I doing wrong here? <laughs> so you're actually in an excellent position when you first start out that you'll never experience again in the lifetime of your channel. Okay. Which is whenever I do, even like this video, I, I spent a lot of time thinking to myself, do I want to do anything outside of power apps on my channel? Because I might attract people that are just about YouTube and they're not about power apps. You know, I spent a lot of time uh, considering that, Kurt. You know, when you're early off and you only have five, 10, 15 videos or especially zero videos, 
you have nothing to worry about. You don't have an audience to complain like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? We want this other content. that You You don't really have that audience to answer for. Now, once you start getting an audience, you really want to cater to that audience. So you keep them around and the audience grows. That's a part of that niche that you dial in on and just focus on. Um, I, I, I can't say that I'll be doing any more YouTube video, any videos about YouTube like I'm doing tonight um, on this channel anymore. I'll probably upload them to this this uh, new channel that I just created. But um, you can make all the mistakes you want, and it doesn't have any negative consequence. You don't have a, a huge audience that you might uh, ruin something, you know. Um, so enjoy that, you know, enjoy it. So um, each day, hit the record button for five minutes to talk about a topic that would be helpful for your target audience and just upload it. Just put it out there. Don't don't think about editing or anything. OK, um, now here's a wild thought, Kurt. If if I'm telling people that their f- first hundred videos is going to suck. Well, why not? Why not? make a little video producing party <laughs> In, invite your uh, best friend, all your best friends over um, or even hop on zoom and you make a little marathon out of it. Order everybody just pizza get, and like just do the this, first 25 videos or, or, or you create those first hundred videos in one weekend, a hundred. Why not? Well, I can think of a couple of good reasons. <laughs> Won't you tell me? Well, one one thing is, I think most importantly, those 100 videos are 100 opportunities for people to get to see your name, get to see your face, get to used to you you coming to the same place at the same time, and they and they they can start counting on you. Now, the video stuff's going to get better as you go, and they're gonna they're gonna see that too, and so they're gonna stick with you. And out of that group of people, you're going to get that name recognition. And, you know, you remember what we, we talk about that. We say, we say, you know, uh, bad publicity is, is just as good as good publicity, right? Because it's publicity, right? So even if your videos are bad, at least it's, at least your name's getting out there and people are seeing it. You're building your, you're building your audience as you're building you. I love it. Kurt, you've already jumped ahead to point number oh. seven on me. Okay, shh. <laughs> Which means you just gave the viewers really good advice. That's actually, I 100% agree with what you just said. Yeah. So going back to what I would suggest and not the second, the first suggestion was just to each day hit the record button for five minutes. Yep. Just a little five minute video Put and just talk about the niche, anything, whatever idea pops in your head. Yep. Hit record. You're not going to edit any of it. If you mess up, it stays in there because one, two, five years from now, you're like, check out this first video I did. Wasn't that funny? And you're going to, you're going to cherish those really weird mistakes and you tripping over your words and looking stupid or whatever, you know, that's actually going to be your goal. Plus plus you're going to, you're going to use your, your audience to gain, to get uh, uh, creativity ideas. So it's not just it's not just catering to them to to for what they want to do. You're going to use them, use your audience to give you uh, topics, and then you just talk about that stuff, and you just keep talking. And then all of a sudden, your audience is going to grow, and you become a rock star. And yeah. you know, I, I mean, you've got a lot of wisdom in this. Like I, uh, I don't think we've actually really talked about this all that much. It's good stuff. Um, yeah. In in. Yeah, you're, you're, you're dropping nuggets of gold here. I'm keeping an eye on the comments here. So data is king here. I've reached 100 videos. Okay, data is king. 20, uh, 20 might be okay, but I'm my, I'm my own worst critic. Yeah. 20 out of 100 might be good videos, he says. Oh, tw- okay. 20 might be okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. you know what? You learn so much by getting to 100. Um, That's right. So hurry up and get to that 100 or 101, but but I'm going to have to agree with what you said. Just do five, like a little five-minute hit record, five minutes, record a video, upload it, and don't worry about it, okay? Yep. You can always change your thumbnails. 
in your titles later. You can actually go into YouTube and blur out anything or even trim out content yeah. in the YouTube video that you've uploaded. You just can't add any more video content. Yeah. Well, uh, you can only I, cut I, things out. Can you allow a quick story here? I, this, sure. This, this related, but not. Okay. It's back to that live music thing. I remember uh -huh. that I was in a rock band and we were covering some, it was a hair band. You know, we had lipstick and makeup and all that crazy stuff. And, um, uh, we were, we were just getting, we just getting together as a band and this, this place, this bar that wanted us to play, they booked us. We knew, we knew maybe nine or 10 songs. That's all we knew. And we had to come up with like three or four hours worth of material. We just played, we went in there and played those nine or 10 songs. That's all we knew. Yeah. And we weren't really good at them. And then we just kept repeating them. <laughs> we just kept repeating the nine or 10 songs. We were totally imperfect. Totally, but but you know what? We built a following from that. That was amazing, from that. So there's a lot of a lot of wisdom in what you're talking about here. You know, um, the 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 audiences that you're going to create, the imperfect action that you start with, and people aren't going to recognize those mistakes the way you're going to recognize them. Yeah, just like Data's King mentioned on my yeah. owner's credit. Well, aren't we all? Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Yeah. By the time you have your first 100 videos up there, you will have fans and yeah. you will have gotten experience with it all and have some yeah. decent analytics to yeah. learn from. Yeah. For example, um, it will become very obvious which one, which videos out of all your videos uh, are most popular. And then you, you sit back and you think about that. Why, why was that most popular? You know, um, some great uh, YouTube is great for analytics, uh, seeing charts and graphs and numbers, all that, all that type of stuff is um, really interesting and, and to look at and analyze. And I would have to say, <clears throat> you have to be careful with your mental health because uh, a lot of times YouTubers will, it, it will become an obsession to look at these analytics. Oh, all well, this, all well, the video. So all my other videos got, you know, 50 views within the first 24 hours. And this one only has 25. Oh my goodness, guys. I have a video that's maybe a year, year and a half old that completely flopped. And right now it's in like my top five videos. Like that's pretty cool. Sometimes like the, the algorithm or the, the audience, you know, it just takes time for things to grow. So don't, it does. I mean, think about that. Like you could have a huge winner of a video and a year later, it won't, be, it won't be realized until then, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, because because even when you put when you put a video out there, even though you put it out there a year ago, it's still being played as if for that person that's just coming out of YouTube, seeing it for the first time, it's the first time you just put it out there for them. It's new to them, you know? So, they, I mean, that group might get excited over it. Yeah. So... Yeah, keeping an eye on the comments here. Data is king. Says I struggle with uploading consistently, uh, with working full time job and in grad school. So I just post whenever I can. So sometimes that it's yeah. probably good if you can record a few videos ahead of time, or you've got maybe three, three in the barrel. You know what I mean? So um, yeah. you know, uh, right? Yeah, maybe so try to do three videos in a weekend and just don't release them, but once a week, right? That kind of thing. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, if you do three in a weekend, then, um, you know, let's say you take the next two weeks off. Well, you still yeah. releasing one of one a week. I, I would definitely recommend that. I've been trying to do that on my channel and recently I've sort of fell behind, but I'm hoping to, uh, you know, get back into the routine of, of doing at least sure. one, one a week, you know, um, pick tools that have little to no learning curve. You don't want to learn video editing for these first, <laughs> I don't know. I, I felt like I had to learn it right away, but um, there's yeah. some simple things that, that you might want to do, like trim out a little part where you mess something up. You can do that in YouTube though. Just keep that in mind. So there is a free re screen recording and it can actually record your webcam. You can use something like Loom. That's L-O-O-M.com. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, bring that up and then also show that um, here. Of course, after I would have cited, added slash home to it, but um, mm -hmm. just want to see just so everybody um, understood what I was saying there. So yeah, check out loom.com. Uh, you got some free tools there that you can use, and it's pretty simple to use. Um, another tool that a lot of companies buy for the their employees because it's so uh, so good is Snagit. Okay, so there is a company out there called TechSmith. Okay, and they create Snagit. They create Camtasia. Camtasia is what I use to to uh, edit my videos. And uh, I'm gonna get you guys the link to that. Yeah, and those both of those products are as simple or as complex as you want to make them to be, right? I mean, you can get started with both of those at a beginning level, but get very in depth with the expert level stuff if you want, you know. Yeah, and Snag, it's just well, it, so it is a paid thing if your employer isn't paying for it. Um, right now, I'm seeing a price of $62, um, and then that might be like $15 a year to keep that up. I find it to be well worth it uh, for creating screenshots, um, so I definitely recommend it. Um, yeah. yeah. So there's that. Um, so snag it. And then if you want to get fancy, you could go with a tool called Camtasia that they sell on that website, uh, techsmith.com. But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to convince you guys not to even do something with Camtasia, um, not initially, uh, in, until you feel like you really need because there's a little bit of a learning curve. Now, <laughs> that's not to say that all the, the other video editing tools that are out there, like Adobe Premiere, oh my goodness, I'm like, why well, have a, I have a license for that? I pay for Adobe Creative Cloud, so I'm like, yeah, I'll just use Adobe Premiere. That's what the pros use and I got a license for it. Why not? Oh my goodness gracious. That, I, that looked like 20 times harder to learn the Camtasia. And, yeah. and Nicole, my wife said, no, Darren, I've used Camtasia before. And she's actually a, a pro with Adobe products. Uh, she does a lot of work in illustrator and uh, Photoshop, but she said, no, stick with Camtasia. You're going to be able to learn it somewhat quickly um, there's a little bit of a learning curve by doing any type of video editing. And it's probably the best tool for people that don't want to spend months and months trying to learn how to do video editing. So um, that's what I would recommend. Now, if you want to plan anything, start with a listing of video ideas in order that you want to do them in first. So I recommend not a written list, but maybe a spreadsheet or a, you know, something um, that uh, is easy to manage a list, maybe a bulleted list inside a Word or Google Docs. And if you ever have an idea, it's like, okay, my, well, my, my niche is um, power apps or, or something. And you're like, okay, well, what, what kinds of things could I talk about? Variables, text boxes, buttons, gallery, there's a for all function. Just start writing them all down or, or yeah. typing them all up in a list, a bulleted list somewhere. Yeah. Okay. And you just look at them and you're like, well, which one excites me? Which, which one am, would I be the most excited about talking about first? You know, make sure that's the front. Like as far as an effort level, you know, if you had to do some research, well, put that, put, put that stuff at the bottom, stuff that you got to like really get into, you know? Um, so that's, I that's think, Darren, important. Uh -huh. I, I think it's good too. I think you're, that's good stuff telling people to make lists. And I also think when, especially when you're beginning out this kind of a thing is to make, is to talk about lists. So, so make lists be your, the things that you talk about as well. So in other words, I'm going to make a list of lists. So I'm going to make a list of 10 things that you need to know to be a computer programmer or three things that you need to know to be a better human being or five things that you need to say to somebody when you're really struggling. You know, just little things like that. And then you can just use those lists as talking points and it just makes it life so much easier for you to plan. You know, you don't have to spend so much time preparing and you can start working on that in, in perfect action that you were talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. And that actually brings me to my, <laughs> it's a great, great transition. Uh, like it almost seems like we had planned this uh, video he, together, he, which he we paid did me big money to do that. He paid me big money to say that guys. No, no. <laughs> Yeah. 
For the ones you plan on doing first or next, have a bulleted list that will serve to give structure to these video ideas. I'm glad so, that Kurt, we think alike here. I'm glad we think alike. <laughs> so, Kurt, so you and I have got a lot of ideas for videos that we want to do together, don't we? So many. And what really brought things to fruition is as we sat uh, together, we had a meeting and we're like, hey, let's firm up this list of, of topics, the order and uh, the subtopics and everything. And, uh, you know, we didn't write out a script. We didn't write down every word we were going to say or how we were going to phrase anything. No, guys, we hit the record button and it's like, OK, we got to <laughs> we have a list. And we just started going through it. Yeah. And we did it in one take. I didn't feel like I had to edit anything out of it. No. Nope. So that's really where the work's at, guys. You come and, up. Mm -hmm. And the people that were watching that got a lot out of that, more so than if you try to pre plan stuff so much. They saw the natural just spilling it out, you know? Yeah. I like it. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just keeping an eye on the comments here. Katie's King says, I try to make. For a second. I try to make videos on topic that aren't already on YouTube. Okay. So something that, um, I disagree. Yeah. I, so I, I, data is King. I actually agreed completely with you. I always try to do stuff that other people weren't doing. I had somebody on my channel. His name was Matthew Devaney. If you go to MatthewDevaney.com, you know who I'm talking about. If you're in power apps, you'll know this guy. I interviewed him. He says, no, I, I go out and then I see what everyone else is doing and I create content on that. Because yeah. you know that people are searching for it. It's going right. to be something that people want to know about, all kinds of good stuff. So, think, yeah. Think about the analogy of reading books, reading fiction books like murder mysteries. Now, if you were trying to write something that nobody else was reading, then you would read some, write something on maybe a book of chess, book on chess. Well, who's going to write? Who's, watch murder, murder mysteries is what everybody's buying. That's what they want to read, right? So, so. Do do videos on what people want to see and just try if you're going to do anything different, just try to see if you can come up with a unique approach to the same problem. I I'm big headed to know to think I'm big headed enough to think that I know less about everything than anybody else. So so I'll go out there and just try to be from the, the most basic level thing. And it I turn I tend to get uh, different content, you know, so I don't know. I think um I think it's good just to go ahead and use what, what everybody's working with. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, so I see, um, yeah, Latrice Mathis. I thought about doing that recording five minutes and just post, please do. Yeah. So, absolutely. uh, Latrice, I hope that you're, you're posting this comment with your channel. So guys, check out, check out her channel. If you're, if you're watching this a year from now, click on her channel name right now and come back and comment on this video of how many videos, Let's see if she's hit that hundred video mark yet. I want to see if she's if she's done that. Uh, you know, whenever somebody looks at looks like this comment, clicks on her on her uh, her stuff. So, yeah, absolutely. This is uh, this is cool. Uh, the next thing I was gonna say was forget about nice equipment at first. I know why you're doing that. <laughs> But Kurt, you sort of bite. So you guys, he's he's uh, reacting a certain way because if you guys don't hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna this is gonna be a Wizard of Oz moment, guys. Okay, you guys ready for this? <laughs> that is not a virtual background. Nope. Kurt, if, if, if you looked at closely, Kurt has the exact same room divider behind him. <laughs> if you look at Kurt's microphone, he's got a little Yeti microphone. And, uh, you know, so, so you came in and you're helping me with my YouTube channel that's been around for about two years. Okay, So if you and I um, had seen a video like this, like Kurt and, and maybe Kurt, but we need a really nice video camera. Like, oh, this this video I just saw said, don't worry about nice equipment at first. Because those first 100 videos are going to suck. So what you do, everybody's got a smartphone, right? Every smartphone's got a camera. Every smartphone's got a microphone. Just hit record and talk for five minutes. Um, so guys, uh, my wife has a channel and I told her to do this. So when you, 
<laughs> we have two toddlers. So she takes them off to school uh, almost every day and um, she drops them off. And then on her way back, I'm like, set up your phone on your, on your dashboard, on your windshield. I'll, I'll buy a little thing that will hold it. And you just start, and she's, she has a background in marketing. Okay. And I said, um, just use your phone, hit record and just drive home and talk about some marketing topic. Okay. Yeah. And uh, just see what comes out of that. Do you know um, that she created videos that were, I, I believe were amazing. Maybe, maybe I'm biased. Maybe um, I'm going to share with you guys a link to this. And um, I did her video editing and she would do the most hilarious things in her car while she's talking about marketing. And she would say things, cut that one out cut that one out. And, and she would do that. Like a truck would cut her off. She goes, you know, guys, I'm just going to say it. I hate big trucks. So what I did was I took, I called that the gold. I took all these little funny things that she said that yeah. I cut them out. So when she's talking about marketing, you're just getting the good marketing advice. And I took all these little funny things that she did. And I put at the beginning and at the very end, and I think they were amazing videos. Yeah. yeah. Was, really? You're going to put that in there? And um, yeah. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. <laughs> I am going to share a link with you guys. And, uh, right. You, you got to remember, it's if you think about life and you look at uh, uh, memories with loved ones and things like that and moments, it was always the silly moments that you remember and mean so much, right? The it's small the ones, things. It, the ones that we 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 plan and try to be all proper and all that, you know, they don't have they don't have the same thing. But it's those little goofs that we do, the little mistakes that we make, the little the little slur on words that we say. The, those things mean they're precious. They're absolutely precious. And that's what I think keep people that make, that's what makes us human. And I think that's what makes people want to keep coming back with excitement, you know. Absolutely. I think that was real smart doing those things like that. I am going to, well, so, you guys, she has got 21 subscribers and she, so this is what she did. She stopped doing them. And I'm like, oh. Nicole, you need to keep doing them. Oh. And hey, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, it's just, um, well, actually you go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, you know, and you say 21 subscribers doesn't sound like very many. And, and, you know, you, we could say, you know, a thousand subscribers don't sound like very many, but, but this isn't Taylor Swift re releasing her new album. This is, this is somebody that's dealing with, in your case, you're dealing with computer topics and you're dealing with uh, power uh, uh, programming. She's dealing with marketing. So we're not attracting, you know, 40 million people with every album that we do, you know, because it's a different type of niche is what we're dealing with here. And sometimes you don't want to judge the niche by the, by the number, right? Don't judge the niche by the number. That's like, that should be a cover of a book. Right. Absolutely. So when you say 21, that's actually probably more like in Taylor Swift numbers, that would be like maybe 10,000, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. And she has eight videos and think about this guys. So she drops the toddlers off how many times in a year? Uh, well, it's less than 365, maybe 200, yeah. uh, maybe 150. She could have had 100 videos done in since the time she started this. And I, I don't know if you guys see these thumbnails, but they are <laughs> hilarious. And the That's things she stuff. does in them are hilarious. Um, I think if, uh, you know, there are 100, under 100 views here, but this stuff is really good. Um, if yeah. she had just kept going, yep. she might be a bigger star than me, Kurt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're right. That's the key. The key is consistency. Never stop. Never stop putting content out. I don't care if it's just the, you think it's the dumbest thing in the world. Just put content out there, man. Content, content, content. Keep going. Don't stop. Content is king. Data is king would say data is king, no, but no. in this game, content is king. No, no. <laughs> Elvis is king. And we all know that. Elvis is king. <laughs> but that's right. That's, that's true you know, content be, and be consistent, consistency, like every week, if you're doing it once a week, every week, every week, don't stop. Data is king. You, you guys, shame on you guys for stopping and not being consistent, you know? Yeah. You got to keep it up. Yep. Um, 
I'm going to create one more little tiny URL for you guys because uh, you need to see this here. Let me see. Talk about something, Kurt. Uh, Tell us a joke. What's your dad joke? <laughs> I don't, well, now that you say that, I can't think of one. But if I want, if I was supposed to be quiet right now, I'd be wanting to say 100 dad jokes, you know? Oh. <laughs> what do you call a fish with no eyes? I don't know. Very nice. That's that was a good one. We just lost. We just lost the lots of retention. We just lost the ten viewers that we had here. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you know what's great about that? I'm I'm going to give you guys another nugget that I didn't even plan on sharing with you guys. So this is this might end up being an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Who knows? We, maybe we, three we or can't four. Do, we can't do short. Videos. We can't do short. No. This could yeah. end up being. Uh, 25 little separate videos. So what does that tell you? I could probably get to my 100 video mark on my new channel by the end of the week. It's just That's so true. easy, guys. And, and yeah. people coming into it fresh, they think it's all oh, daunting. Now, now, are you going to talk to them about the marketing concept of what you just said at all? Or are you going to just stick with just, just getting your videos out there? I don't know. What, what do you mean? What, what, like, expand. Well... Because what you're what you're doing in this is you're create your whole goal in this content is to create value in what you're saying, okay. Uh, yeah. And if your goal is to try to make money, if your goal is trying to make money, it's about trying to reach people and reach the masses and giving the masses fr something free, so that they want to keep coming back, right? Yeah. So so like it, for instance, if you've got ten things that you want to do, put talk about the, the the thing that you think is the most important one out of the whole ten and give that to them for free. And then, and then you can say, hey, guys, you know, for $100, I'll show you a video on the other nine. And they, they'll pay you the $100, $100 just to see what the other nine are, if that, that one thing that's free is good. So Absolutely. I, 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 I'm, I'm saying all that to say that it's important, <laughs> it's important to consider your goals when you're putting this, these out. It's all about that content. It really is because you're trying to create value. And I love what you said. Maybe you've got an hour and a half stuff. Break it up into content chunks. And then and then and put that out there. That's what they're looking for. They're look, they're looking for someone who's going to be consistently putting stuff out there. They can go. That Darren has become the go-to dude for them for power apps right now. He didn't start that way. He started out just being one of these the, the, another blubbering idiot out there trying to do a video, you know. But guess what? People started watching him, and they can, he he was consistent, and he kept on going and going. And now he's he's building a really thriving business from it now. And it all started, it started from this moment. Like here, talk, he's talking to you guys about right now, start your YouTube channel. That's what he did. He said, I've got COVID. I can't go anywhere. I might as well try to start something here. And that's what he did. <laughs> and, and I didn't, I remember when he was first telling me about, it, I thought he was crazy. I was like, whatever, Darren, you know, look at what he's done. He's got me here now. I mean, I, I was, <laughs> I was like so far away from all this video stuff, you know, but now I'm, I'm thinking, this is pretty cool. Yeah. But he, I never he, thought I'd make enough money to hire people full time. Like right. so, I'm so outside. Right. You are so so Darren is not just this guy that says, you know, well, I'm gonna promise you this thing out here. Just do, go out there and do this thing, it'll work. It'll work. He's living proof that it works. He literally did it and he came from very humble beginnings. Very humble. You know, so I mean, if he can do it, you guys can do it for sure. I'm a humble beginnings. You used to call me a baby programmer. I'm still raw about that. He was a baby programmer too. <laughs> He's grown up a little bit. Though. And then, and then I asked him to be the best man of my wedding. And what does he do? Ding, 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 ding. Time to embarrass Darren. I got him his job here and he's a baby programmer. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, what? But that's actually what, what the job of the best man is. If he has one job, it's to embarrass the, the groom at the That's what we're trying right. to do. Yeah, that's, I, yeah, yeah. I yeah, do. Yeah. Go ahead. But I guess the point I'm just trying to get is, you guys don't think that you can't do this. Any, any Anybody that has any kind of want to do this can do it. I'm telling you, man. I've seen people make generational wealth for lemon cookie recipes off of YouTube. Generational wealth, man. You know? So- I mean, it, 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 can, it can be done. Just, just, you got to stick with what he's telling you though. 
Content, consistent content. It's the secret to the whole thing. I got a question for you, Kurt. G Spoon asks, what do you recommend to overcome the need for everything to be as perfect as possible? Well, we just talked about it, didn't we? We said imperfect action. Don't wait for it to be perfect. Just jump out there and do it. It's kind of like this. Have any of you guys ever started a family of your own? I know Darren has. But there was a time when you said, <laughs> there was a time when you said, man, I don't know. I got to wait till I can afford it to have kids. And if any of us ever waited to, to, to be able to afford children before we had children, we'd never have children. Nobody would. This world would be, we'd be extinct, right? So we have imperfect action, man. You know, go out there and do something. That's how you, that's how you overcome that need. I've, I've got a piece of advice that will get you over this really quick, G Spoon. And um, I'm going to tell you about a time when I when I used to be single and um, I I had somebody give me the best advice. The hardest thing about being single uh, as a man is approaching someone that you're interested in in, in yeah. some environment. And there's always a huge possibility you're going to get rejected. Like, who are you? Get away from us. You know, or, <laughs> um, and you're just want to make new friends or, or maybe find out, you know, you want to, uh, you know, get to know somebody better. Maybe there was, there, there might be a future there possibility, you know, and, and I hate that. Like I, my emotions, like, uh, you know, where, where my emotions on my sleeves and stuff like rejection, man, that hurts really bad. You know, I don't want to go up to, uh, you know, a woman and, and, you know, she, she turned me down, reject me. And I, I'd probably go home and cry that night or something. I don't know. Um, and the advice that I got is go out and get a hundred rejections. Just go out and say, I'm going to get rejected a hundred times tonight. And, and that could be just, just going out in public and just try, just go up to somebody and say, Hey, how is everything? How is everything? What is that supposed to mean? Oh, I'm just being friendly. You know, how, how is, how is everything? I mean, so the most open-ended question you could ever ask somebody could be asked to anybody, really, you know? And if you can't handle that, just uh, when you go out to eat or you go to a grocery store, uh, the cashier, you say, hey, how is everything? And you just get really used to that. And then what that person said, listen, tonight you are going to get 100, rejection, 100 rejections on a marriage proposal. I want you to... Go up and uh, like if it's a, a social setting, whatever, and just you can act like you're kidding around. And um, I cannot believe how many people were like they they loved they didn't take me seriously. But I really got over that fear of rejection. Oh my goodness, yeah. I made it a game. So G Spoon, make it a game. Say hey. I am making a hundred videos that suck that nobody will want to watch. This is my first one. That's it. Make it 10 seconds. Upload it. This is day two of me making videos that suck and, and add something to it today. I'm going to have you guys watch me eat a bowl of cereal. There's your second video <laughs> and just make it a game. Nobody, you know, your, your channel has no subscribers. You might as well have fun with it. Right. Get to a hundred videos that suck. And you got that under your belt. And you might be surprised that maybe one or two of those videos, and you might end up with a hundred subscribers from those hundred videos. You bet. And, and then, at a minimum, at a minimum, the, the goofy eating the bowl of cereal, that might make some good uh, lead-ins for other videos at some point or thumbnails or whatever, you know? You might get a, uh, you know, Kellogg's contacting you about yeah. <laughs> one of those videos might go viral. And the fact that you use Kellogg's there, they're like, hey, what do you think about creating a new video like that? Yeah. But, but use Captain Crunch this time or you never know what's going to happen. You know, generational well. surprises, guys. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So what's the new channel called? It's called Superpower Users and the link to it. I, I create a little tiny URL link to it so you guys can see that. All right. So I'm going to go on to the next uh, point here. Your phone will do just fine uh, forgetting about the nice equipment. Okay. Use what you have, like your phone. 
Now, if you have money to spend, okay, if you have money to spend, get a nice quality microphone. Okay, so I use uh, a Blue Yeti. If you go out to Amazon.com, you can find a Blue Yeti for $60, $70, and that's really not bad. I have found decent microphones for $30, $35 along with a boom. This is called a boom, and it attaches. Sometimes, watch this. You might hear some extra noise, so if you mount it to it's really best. I learned uh, uh, something. I... Um, I'm going to release a video soon, guys, with uh, a guy that I, I've looked up uh, to for a long time. Uh, his name is Shane Young, and he does Power Apps videos as well. And I, one of his videos, he's he sort of showed his um, he showed his studio, and he showed that he had his microphone attached to the wall. Now that didn't work out for me. I still have mine attached to the table. I tried to put some. Uh, you know, some rubber things underneath it. So it took a lot of the shock out of it, you know, so you didn't hear too much of that. But yeah, you start to notice like if you type and you have something attached to your desk that the keyboard's sitting on, that, you know, you're going to hear that type of stuff. But so if if you've got 30 bucks to spend, uh, you know, in your budget, go on Amazon and find the best, look at the reviews, uh, make sure it's got a 4.5 star uh Type of thing. I've never seen a five star on on Google unless there was only one review. But um, yeah, look at the reviews and whatever money you have to spend. Um, if you have at least a hundred dollars, I would recommend going with a blue Yeti. Okay, blue Yeti. Um, because I play World of Warcraft, you're gonna see. <laughs> this was a special. Uh, World of Warcraft edition. Uh, I probably didn't need to do that. I probably paid more for that little logo being on there than anything. Um, it has a few features on there that I never use, but uh, yeah, just, just pick up the the sixty or seventy dollar one um, that you can find out there. Okay, on on Amazon. So people will put up with bad video quality. Okay. They won't put up with bad audio quality. So make sure you've got a decent microphone if you can. If I mean, your, your phone mic will do just fine. And your phone, your smartphone will have decent video quality. Use that as much as possible. Um, if you're recording your screen like I do and I show people practical things. Um, uh, hey, Kurt. Hey. hey. <laughs> I just wanted to welcome you back. So, yeah, I was talking about... Uh, you know, video quality, just use your phone. Um, you know, Blue Yeti is really, they're, it's not expensive. No. Uh, if you're recording your screen with that loom, doing instructional videos on your screen, then, um, you know, your web camera, you know, having your little face in the corner, that doesn't need to be high quality. You know, you can actually create great videos with um, the equipment that you already have. Okay. No. Um, now I do have a link to a, a blue Yeti I had here in my outline. So I'll go ahead and um, create a little link. I want to say Darren's uh, recommended. Okay, let's see if that's tiny enough. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. Should have become a YouTube affiliate so I get a kickback on these recommendations. Right. <laughs> All right. Now, if you want to get a decent but cheap web camera, there is one that I recommend. Have you ever heard of it? Uh, Kurt's called Elgato Face Cam. I have. I've heard of that. There's another <laughs> oh, good one out there called Nexigo, too, that are good. Okay. Well, uh, spell that or type that in the chat. I don't know if you're able to. Uh, ne Nexigo is N E X I G O. Okay. Both both of those cameras are very affordable, and they pretty good quality. Darren's recommended a cam off of. Uh, and I do this and embed it in the video because uh, sometimes I forget to actually go through and post all those these links through that I. Okay, so the next topic, thumbnails and titles will make or break your content. Wow. Now, the great thing about that is that you can always change them in the future. Um, 
you should, if you have to, spend as much time on the video, on the the thumbnail and the title as 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 much time as you spend on the video itself. Does that seem strange? Most people would say that's strange. You know, the video content is king, but guys, if they don't, no. if you don't interest them enough, you don't build enough interest with the thumbnail and the title, they're never going to see the great content you create. That's true. Okay. Now, if every once in a while people click on, like, oh, this is great content, you know, I, you know, I don't know, but yeah, if there's no click through rate. That's an, it's a metric of your YouTube channel click through rate. You've got to, you've got to attract it. And there's a whole lot of that out there, right? So that out of the millions of things that they can, people can look at, most people got 15 minutes on their computer or their, their phone that they got a, a few minutes here that they can go and look at that stuff. So they're out there trying to grab whatever they see and that you've got to get something that catches their eye. You have to. Yeah. So if you think about, um, if anyone here watches uh, Netflix, uh, a lot of people do, or whatever uh, it could be Disney Plus, whatever type of streaming service. Uh, when it's your time to relax, or, or you know, you're on Facebook, think about the what content you pay attention to. You yeah. know, what was it that made you yeah. click on a particular movie, TV show, or whatever? Was it no? Like, re really ask yourself, what was it? You know, what was the thumbnail and the title? You know, or or there was a little hook in there. Maybe the you're going through Facebook and there's like a little video like, hey, blah, 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 blah. And then you're like, oh, what's that? And you click on it. Well, pay attention to your own reactions to the content out there because you're going to it's really that's that's like half, maybe even 60 percent of your success yeah. long term will be based on getting into And So you could pay people on Fiverr and pay them a few dollars per thumbnail, or you could go to a website called Canva. I was going to ask you when you're going to talk about that. Great. Canva. It's for people that don't know photo. I mean, if you know, if you have Photoshop skills, do it in Photoshop, but you can do it in Canva probably, um, you know, a lot quicker, even if you know that those other programs. Yeah. The learning curve of Canva is nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, my other bullet point is uh, regarding the thumbnails and titles. It's just as important as the content you create. So there's three metrics that will determine your success. Okay. So the click-through rate, um, actually two. This is the click-through rate that's determined by the by the thumbnail and the title. And then the other thing is your retention. Yeah. So if people click on your thumbnail or click on your title, start to watch the video, and within 10 seconds – they bounce, they're out of there. Nobody sticks around for the full 10 minutes or some of my videos are one to three hours. Um, and they don't stick around. Nobody sticks around that that tells YouTube, oh, they use clickbait. Maybe I had a, 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 a thumbnail that had uh, Tom Cruise on. It made them think <laughs> that I was going to show a movie clip of Tom Cruise or Tom Cruise was going to teach them power apps or some power user type of topic. And you got ugly Darren in here. Hi guys, I'm going to teach you something, blah, blah, blah. And it's not, you know, you didn't deliver on your promise. Your, you, your thumbnail and your title was a promise and within the first five seconds. They're, they're, they're asking the question, are they going to, are they going to deliver on what they promised? Me? And the answer is no. YouTube takes note of that and it becomes part of the algorithm. That, well, they'll start, they'll stop showing videos. They'll stop suggesting your stuff because nobody really likes it once they click on it. So are you going to get to that point about what you just made right there about that five second window? Oh my goodness, Kurt. I, it's like you, you've seen my outline here. I don't think I've shown you this outline. Have I? No. Ah, look at you. You compliment me in so many ways, man. Like <laughs> our, our thought process, our skills, everything. Do everything you can to keep users for 30 seconds. I don't care if you need flying words coming in and out. Um, what did I do in this video? The first 30 seconds, whatever my title was, you should be saying that right away. What, what yep. was the thing that I had, uh, 10 things you need to know to build a channel. Yep. And I said it right away. So they know that I'm definitely going to be talking about that. The reason that they clicked on it. Okay. Um, and if this was an edited video, um, and maybe, maybe I'll edit this video and maybe republish it on the other channel to make it, um, 
really exciting. Maybe I'll have flying graphics and I'll have like a, a kitten or maybe I'll have a, I'll do something to keep somebody or, there for 30 seconds. Or, or better than all those flying graphics, misspell the words. Yeah. I actually have one of my thumbnails. I said, uh, what, what did I do? I, I, you know how people sometimes there's, there's uh, your, Y-O-U-R, then there's Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, yeah. and then there's well, another your, um, or, or maybe I'm thinking about there. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah so I misspelled. There. I misused, I guess, grammatically or the, the spelling. Like it was a correct spelling, but I used it wrong. And and uh, somebody told me it's like next time you create a thumbnail or a title, make a blatant misspelling, and your video sometimes will go viral based on that mistake because there's nothing more important in life, Kurt, than correcting somebody on the internet. That's right. I don't That's know if right. you know that. Nope. You've There's ever seen the here. comic of, of this guy like furiously tapping on a keyboard and his wife peeks in and said, Hey, you're coming in board. No, I've got to, uh, I'm doing something very important. She's like, okay. Like somebody's wrong on the internet. I have to correct them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, a, it, it's like it was a 10 commandment or something, you know, it's like, <laughs> we have, we have to do this. It's, it's like yeah. a dog trying not to bark at the postman when he's coming by delivering the mail. You got to. It's like every Whoa. day. <laughs> you can't hold back. You just can't stop. It just got to be done. <laughs> got to be done. <laughs> so, okay. So in order, okay, do everything you can to keep the viewers for 30 seconds. At first, don't introduce yourself. That's sort of hard because the first thing, it seems natural. Hi, guys. My name's Darren. Yeah. And today I'm going to talk about blah, blah, blah. Now, the first thing you noticed in this video was I said pretty much the title, whatever title I plan on using, make sure that's in there. I think the, the YouTube algorithm and all the AI technology, it can actually pick up the words that are in the video. And even though you don't put it in the YouTube title or the description, YouTube knows that it's somewhere in there. And maybe somebody's doing a web search for something obscure. There's no video about it. And I think they index the words. Uh, it, it might take uh, may, take them a few hours or a day or two to actually finish all that indexing. <laughs> but I think it's in there. I think so. So uh, make sure, I, I think it pays attention. Like if you're saying what it is you said you were going to talk about within the first few seconds, like, okay, this guy is actually delivering on what he's, what he's saying there. So yeah, don't introduce yourself. Jump right into it. Guys, we're going to talk about blah, blah, blah. And uh, in the course of this video, we're going to talk about blah, blah, and blah. Give them a reason. Uh, you know, something that I probably should have done is showed everybody these 10 points that I was going to go through. And maybe I might might edit it to, to maybe keep people around. Give them a yeah. reason to stick around through the whole content of, of the whole video, you know? Yep. Do you have any thoughts on that? I, I, I see you. Uh... I actually, well, I actually think that maybe even to one up that I hate to one up you, but even if I wanted to one up you, it, it would be like this. Maybe have a, a, a stupid dry erase board in the back with the 10 points on there. And, and see, here's the reason why I really love this idea because you, you know, especially when you get long winded, like I am and Darren is to a lesser degree, um, you know, we talk for an hour. And, and, and we're doing some inform informative stuff. And maybe your video content is going to have some very informative stuff to it. So people are going to want to go back to it and reference it often. Well, instead of having to sit there and say, where, where was it? What minute was it that he said that? You know, if you have that dry erase board in the background where, or, or something with, with the, the 10 items and you could be crossing them off as you're going, it kind of shows you an outline of, oh, there it is. He's getting ready to start talking about uh, text boxes or he's getting ready to start talking about buttons here. You know, whatever it is, the topic that you're going to talk about, have that have that posted up there so that people can see it on their video when they're looking at it later. You know, anyway. absolutely. That's actually a great idea. People love whiteboards. You I know, do. when you when back in school, you know, I remember you taught me, Kurt. Yeah. You walked up to a whiteboard, blah, 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 blah. And you wrote oh, it up goodness. there. And we're all sitting there watching them write a word with a with a dry erase. And we're waiting. Oh, oh. and they'd say, oh, you misspelled that. <laughs> they did too. Hopefully I didn't do that. <laughs> no, I don't think you did. 
Yeah. Um, so do you guys see this little stuff I'm showing at the bottom of the screen? So I'm hoping that it's sort of like a whiteboard, where as you're fast forwarding, you're, you're actually seeing like maybe yeah. I'm talking here five minutes about demonstrate that you're going to deliver on That's why nice. they clicked. You know, so maybe that also in YouTube, you have the ability to put little chapters so they can actually see little lines in the, in the little progress bar. Uh, not everybody does it, but you can add it. Um, sometimes YouTube will add it for you if it feels like it knows. Um, so that's that's a possibility, too. If, if I have the time, I'll go back and add those. But um, a lot of times when my live streams are really long, I just don't have the time uh, to do it. But uh Hopefully I go back and, and add them later on. Um, yeah, give them a reason to watch the whole thing, okay? So I, I think uh, if I were to apply my own uh, wisdom here is I should have shown all the, like a table of contents. What what all is Darren going to talk about? Like maybe um, I cover the first points like, yeah, this is pretty basic stuff. Bounce out of there. Maybe if I showed them like the last three things, like, oh, that looks interesting. They just fast forward to make 80% of the way through and get that little nugget there that will count towards, um, you know, retention of, of sticking around. YouTube will, um, uh, make note of that, you know, and sometimes YouTube will sort of recommend, like if you do a Google search, they'll say, Oh, these are the key moments. So Google can actually help you out. Sometimes when yep. videos really take off, it's because Google is suggesting something based on people searches there. Uh, do you know what stingers are, Kurt? Have you ever heard of that stingers? Never heard of it. What is it? Uh, so we're not talking about scorpions tails. Okay. Okay. Um, so stingers are these little things like, let's say you've got a little animated video at, so I used to have this little thing called, um, it was, uh, uh, power apps tutorial and I had this little head sound to it. And at first you're thinking, that's so cool. I'm going to put that at the beginning of every video so everybody knows it's me and my thing. People don't care about that. <laughs> and if you have an audience that really likes you, they get really tired of seeing that 10-second thing that you force them to watch every video. Just, mm -hmm. just don't do that. Now, the exception to that, and I'll, I'll bring that up here on the screen, Um is actually the, the thing that I'm going to uh, cover after this. If you have time to do so, add engaging captions. Engaging captions are like words that come in and out really fast. It's not really meant for the hearing impaired, but sometimes people will stick around and like watch all the words coming across. You'll see that in TikTok a lot. But what I was trying to get at here was at the end of your intro, You've hooked them. You told them what you're going to do. You give them a reason to stick around, even at the end part. Hi, I'm Darren, and I'm here to teach as many people power apps as possible. That's all, you know? So maybe if they're the first time they come across, you know, like, hey, I'm Darren, and this is what I do. And then you jump into it. That, that gives my, okay, I'm going to subscribe to this guy because actually power apps is what I want to learn, you know? So that gives them a reason to actually subscribe. All right. So the next uh, point here now, and we're, we're making good progress here, Kurt. I know we've, we've been on here for a little while and <laughs> we finally got to the point that you brought up at the beginning. What, what, what do you think that is? I can't even remember. You can't remember. What about be, be consistent? Be, I, I consistently can't remember. There you go. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm being, uh, Consistently inconsistent. <laughs> yep. Consistently inconsistent. Um, what about this? At the beginning, what I said is you could record a video every day for five minutes. Right? Yep. You could do that. You could be consistently releasing content every day. There are some YouTube channels that do that. Yep. Now, here's the thing. How can I follow Darren's advice at the beginning and Kurt's advice here at the end? Well, you have a little party where you record 120 videos in one week. Or at least the first hundred and you, you make them like 30, some of them are 30 seconds, some of them are minutes, some are five minutes, some of them are 10 minutes, but you have a hundred uh, video content recorded. Okay. That doesn't mean you just release it all at once. Um, you just trickle it out, but you consistent, maybe one a week or one a day. Yep. If you, if you have the hundred, why not release one a day for, gee whiz, you've got, um, 
over three months worth of content there. If you just release it, trickle it out once a day, that's pretty good. Now there's an exception to this, be consistent. There's an exception to it, which is your first, when you first launch it, um, I would recommend releasing, just at least get your first 15 crappy videos, get them recorded. You could release all of those at once. You know why I would recommend doing that, Kurt? If somebody comes across your first video and they like it, they want to see what all, what other stuff you have out there. There you go. Yeah. And when they're watching the first video, they'll, they might see uh, 12 of your other videos on the side. You want people to binge watch your content. That's right. Yeah, that's right. But beyond those first 10, yeah, just trickle them out there. Be consistent, either one a day, one a week. Um, there's some really big YouTubers that release one video a month and they're huge. They get millions of views within the first hour, but people come to count on that consistency one a month, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, be consistent. Um, yeah, upload new videos on a regular schedule so that your viewers know when to expect new content. The more consistent you are, the more likely people are to subscribe to your channel. Okay. Um, now there's not much, uh, up for, there's not much into this, um, eighth point, but I'm going to throw it out there on your channel and social media. So every time you release a new video, go out to your Facebook, go out to your Twitter, go out to all these, you might already have a hundred, uh, people that follow you on, on Facebook, or you might have 500 friends. And if they comment on that video, you make it a public post on Facebook, you might reach 500 people in 24 hours, you know, let allow people to tag other people, just make it freely available out there to the world. And the more exposure you're going to get, um, let, let me give you something that's actually really gold. Okay. So what I would do when I first started out is I would go to uh, Facebook groups that discussed power apps. And um, I, I was like a, 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 a spammer or a scammer going out there like, Hey, everybody will look at my stuff, you know, and just like self promote. No, you find somebody that needs help and you provide value. Okay. Somebody said, I need to know how to upload videos, uh, upload, um, images into my power apps. Um, and I'm like, okay, I already know how to do that. I recorded it. It's one of my most popular, one of my most popular and also one of my crappiest videos I've created. I, it, Kurt, we need to go back and redo that one. Didn't you? <laughs> I make that a five minute video. Um, and then nobody and will watch it again. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I, I went, I created, it, I uploaded it to YouTube and I said, Hey, this is how you do it. Here's my video that does it. You provide value. Okay. You don't take value away. Like, Hey, check out my, my channel out here. And you know, it's, it's like, you're like, Hey, give me value. Come, come subscribe. No, you, you, you look at people's needs out there and you honestly try to provide value. Um, and you link to it and if, if people like it, it's good content. They're going to click like, and then they're going to comment. And then Facebook is going to recognize that and show it to more people. Um, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. So let's say you're a, um, you're a teacher that does tutoring on the side and you're trying to do some group tutoring or mm -hmm. something along those lines. Well, go out to Facebook groups where parents are looking for tutors for their kids. And it might be that, you know, they're, they're trying to get, um, their, their kids are maybe are flunking out or they're, they've got some issues in like, Hey, how do I teach my kid how to score higher on my, on an SAT test or whatever. And it's like, well, I've got this free PDF out here. I've got this free video out here on YouTube that sort of enumerates what I would recommend. And, and uh, maybe you're not even asking for anything in return. You're just providing that value. Now in the video description, like, well, if you want to know what I do is I, I tutor kids that are trying to master the SAT. You know, if you want to know more, just click on this link and, and I'll help you out, you know, and uh, that that's how you have a win-win situation. They're getting the help. You're providing value. And then, you know, maybe every once in a while you get, um, you know, some some business that helps you pay your bills. You know? Good stuff. So that was point eight all by itself. Just promote your channel and social media um, by providing value. Uh, network with other YouTubers. 
Okay, so um, I've, I've got a video recorded with uh, Shane Young, somebody I really respect. And, um, you know, I went on Twitter. I saw him talking about on Twitter about, um, by the way, uh, Shane Young, if you guys do, do a search for Shane Young Power Apps or Power Apps 911, that's the name of his company. And, uh, oh, my goodness, the guy's been around for years. Been, I mean, I think he was teaching, writing books on SharePoint before I even knew what SharePoint was back in maybe 2003, 2005, you know, the guy's been out there for a while. He's been helping the community. He's been an MVP for uh, maybe 15 years, uh, maybe more. Um, so he's like, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft uh, MVP. Um, and I, I, he was talking about chat, G, chat GPT and I use chat GPT. And I told ChatGPT, like, hey, um, this guy's like awesome. And write me a poem about a bromance, about how we could do a video together. And uh, it wrote me a poem. It was amazing. And uh, so we recorded the video. I think it was last week. And video editing takes so much time. Um, so of course I gotta, I gotta edit it to make it perfect. Cause this is like a really special opportunity for me to collaborate. And you know what? He actually told me, I think it was like, Darren, just let me know if you, if, if you want me to sort of promote it and, and, and get people to watch the video, I, I'd be more than happy to do that. I'm like, Oh dude, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> I, I would appreciate that. That would be, that would be great. So collaborate is a way you're, so I've got like, Right now, I got 9,000 subscribers or thereabout, and uh, I can't imagine they haven't heard about Shane Young if, if they're trying to learn Power Apps. But um, for those that hadn't, they'll, they'll be exposed to Shane Young, and um, maybe maybe some of his viewers might find value in my channel. And what's great about collaborating, you should never see your fellow YouTubers, even though they're doing the exact same thing as you, as competition. No. Okay, let me let, let me let me throw a, a question at you, Kurt. Um, what is the one band that you listen to on Spotify? That I listen to all the time. Well, yeah. Well, let's let's say uh, let's say your your most favorite band. Which most favorite Nickelback. Band? You like Nickelback. Wow, Nickelback is an amazing band. That, that's actually yeah. my favorite band as well, Kurt. <laughs> the internet says you're supposed to hate Nickelback. <laughs> yeah. I guess there was a comedian that made a joke about Nickelback. And good. then the, the internet just agreed, yeah, Nickelback's awful. You know, they're overrated or whatever. Um, but that's the only band that you listen to on Spotify, right? It's just Nickelback. That's the, it. The, the only one. Yeah. You don't listen to any other band. Oh, I do. I listen to all kinds of bands. What about Green Day? They're okay. They're okay. Yeah. I, I love Hillsong. I think Hillsong yeah. is amazing. Hillsong. Yeah. Let's 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 run with Hillsong. But you know what? You you just touched on something. This is the third time that I brought up my music music past. We had a rule. We would go to watch bands, and we had a rule to never put down another band. Never, never put down always. Always build them up, validate them in some fa form or fashion. Find something good to say about them. Always. Like That's that. what you should do. Because guess, guess, guess what? It's going to come back to you every time. If you're doing this with YouTube, your YouTube channel, and you're putting down the, the, the competition, somebody's going to be putting you down. Just that says more them. about you than the other person. Like if you if you're exactly knocking right. somebody else, that actually says more about you and, and your character than That's right. anything that you – could have been saying about that other person. Yep. That's my personal belief. That's right. Um, but I, I I would contend that uh people that find my stuff valuable probably also find Shane Young stuff valuable. Yeah. Um and um it's not a competition, guys. It's sort of th think about uh you know uh you know Shane Young to me is like Metallica or some superstar and yeah, it's, it's who you're indoctrinated to right Here's the thing, Darren, you're going to find people and you have no control over this. You have absolutely no control over this. You can sit there and talk bad about the competition all you want. It doesn't matter because there's going to be a certain number of people that are going to be attracted to the way you bring things that will Shane Young will never, never be able to get. 
and it's vice versa. You'll never be able to get some of the people that just think Shane Young is the best. That you know, there's and and there's no control. Shane Young can't control it, and neither can you. That there's just people that are going to be naturally attracted to the way you deliver. And everybody that's going to be setting this YouTube channel up, that's going to happen for you too. I, I've had people actually tell me that I'm the best in in the yeah. in the power app space, and I'm like, yeah, come on, man. Like, yep. Yep. <laughs> you got, you you got people them. out there like April Dunham and Daniel Christian and Reza, and uh, there's probably another twelve out there that uh, I'm like, no. I'm, but you know, people gravitate towards a certain style. I, right. I I tend to drone on for hours, and there's some people that like that. I don't understand it, but um, like when I see a long video, I'm thinking, oh, like, I mean, look at this video here, Kurt. We're, we're going at an hour and 35 yeah. minutes. And uh, if I were to yeah. see a video out there, um, now I might stick around and watch an hour, 35 minute video. If I really need some help with some YouTube or some power apps I'm, I'm, and they're teaching it in a way that makes sense. And, and maybe that's that's why people are, are telling me that. Uh, you know, blowing up my ego, my, my head's getting bigger. Oh, Darren, you're awesome. But you are, you are completely different than a lot of people, even though, even though you're talking about the same thing, you're completely different because you're, people see you doing that hour and a half thing. You're more having a conversation with somebody. You're not, you're not out there just teaching this specific thing. You're out there just having a conversation about it. We're talking about it, you know, and you'll let that conversation go where it needs to go, you know, and only you can be you. And only you can be you. Yeah. Like, Kurt and I, you have similarities, but really, we sort of complement each other in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, we do. Um, yeah. Get to know other YouTubers in your niche and collaborate on projects. This is a great way to get exposure to a new audience and learn from other creators. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good and stuff. It's. I think it's a perfect way of. You giving, you know, or you lifting somebody else up, and it just, funny enough, it just turns into a win-win situation, you yeah. know? Yeah, that's true. All right, this brings us to our final point, and probably the, the point that people are most interested in. You ready? Get monetized. Make money. Some people want to do this just to make money. I, I mean, as long as you're providing value f- for people, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, you don't want, I mean, I think if you're trying to do something and it's all about money for you, um, it can be hard because people don't stick with it long enough for to, to see the fruits of your labor, you know? Right. So there has to be something besides money to sort of keep you going. Like I really enjoy uh, well, I enjoy helping people. I've got a background as a, as a trainer and, and stuff. And I also like using my create creativity to build apps. So there's a creativity and there's also a little bit of, uh, of, uh, like puzzle. Like you taught me that programming is a lot about solving a puzzle or getting the electrons to do exactly what you want them to do. Do you remember telling me about that? Or have you for- <laughs> You've forgotten about that. No, I remember exactly. You kind of, you kind of change. You, 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 uh, you use your words to it, but that's good though. Yeah, you um, harness all of the power of those electronics, that drum of electronics, and channel it to do one task that you wanted to do in that moment. Yeah, exactly. Hey, come Everybody. on in. I've got, a, I've got a visitor. Yeah, come on in. Come on in. Get in front of my Nikon. I mean, your Nikon. Uh-huh. It's my better half, guys. My boss. Am I allowed to keep going? When When's dinner tonight? No, we're having Hee Haw. Oh, all right. Very good. That's what Blake's request said, so I wanted to get your order. Chicken fried rice. Chicken fried rice. Now, Kurt likes General's Chicken. So Kurt, we'll get you some General's chicken and uh, that's, delivery. That's, that's like I know we're General's chicken. we're having a business uh, business live stream right now, Kurt. So I'm gonna have to expense your uh, your dinner here. So we're, we're you have to let me know what uh, Chinese place that you like. <laughs> I don't even know. I need to get. I need to find one though. Right? Chicken fried rice sounds really good. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad I took that knock on the door. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> and people can see I'm, I'm human here. I actually, uh, biological needs for food and, and, uh, everything's not like, like you said, um, something that you saw like as a benefit in the videos that I did was I didn't make it all sanitized. Nope. No sanitized stuff. Yeah. Because if you edit a video, chop it up really nice and take out everything like that. If this was a video, I would have hit pause on the record button or I would have sliced that out and you guys never would have seen that, but it makes it a little less human if you don't show that type of stuff. That's true. So that going back true. to what um, one of the previous people said is, you know, what do I do if I want everything perfect? No, the, the, the imperfection is perfection. It's it's hard, though, for a perfectionist to see it another way. It's so hard. It you is. know. It is. So getting monetized on YouTube, there are a few things that you need to do to qualify. For, it's called the um, YouTube Partner Program. So you need to have... Um, currently, or the, the last time I checked, a uh, thousand subscribers, and those thousand subscribers will be the hardest thousand that you ever get. Um, I'm growing by a thousand subscribers uh, about once a month. So every month that rolls by, I have another thousand. So, um, which is it's just blowing my mind, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that will take a while for you to get there, and you get there by being consistent and just hitting the record button and uploading, and don't focus on the perfection or whatever. I mean, if you see some ways to improve, you know, go for it. But don't, but don't use that as an excuse not to be consistent. And keep going. Yeah. And uh, so the other requirement is to have four thousand watch time hours. So if you're just creating little three to five minute videos, um, you know, you're gonna have to produce a lot of little videos to to get there. Um, what I did was I just hit record and like, all right, well, I'm going to show you how to build an application one screen at a time. And my videos were an hour and it still took me a long time to get a 4,000 watch time hours. Cause not everybody sticks around for an hour video. Um, what I recommend doing as soon as your YouTube channel, I think you got to have like 500 subscribers, I think before you can start doing live streams. Uh, what you want to do is do live streams as soon as possible. And that, that guys can be incredibly intimidating. It was intimidating for me, even after I hit that 500 subscriber mark and go back and look at my very first live stream. Um, I had an echo going on. I was making all kinds of mistakes. That video, that video is my most popular video. Uh, <laughs> My most popular video changes from week to week, but if I look at it this week, I believe it actually is my 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 most popular video. You watch the first uh, if if you do a search for Darren Nice and also put in the words um, service desk application template. It's Microsoft template that I was trying to get to work because right now if you just try to use it, it doesn't work. Um, I made so many mistakes in that thing as one of the most popular videos. I've, I've made a lot of YouTube revenue off of it as well. But in order for you to start making any money on YouTube from the advertisements that appear on your, your videos, in, in order for you to get any money from that, you need to hit these milestones, get the 1,000 subscribers, get the 4,000 watch time hours. If you start doing live streams, hit it, and, and you take a little topic that might take you five minutes to do, hit the record button, go live. And uh, right now I'm using a, a, a service called uh, restream.io. Check that out. I, for the longest time I was using streamyard.com. Um, or you could just go live directly inside of YouTube. So maybe for your first time, just go live right there in YouTube. I like these other uh, streaming services because I could do a live stream uh, in Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and YouTube and all these other places all at once. I thought that was really you know, um, so yeah, just go start going live and you'll find people. There are people get really engaged with live content that they can go into the comment section and type something and the person's listening. It's like a two way communication and uh, you'll see your community grow. And so uh, you'll get there really quick. As soon as you can start doing live streams, start doing them and you'll get monetized very quickly, uh, in my opinion. Um, that was actually my next point. Start doing live streams. <laughs> now there is something that I don't think a lot of people know about. I, I came across this. 
And some people say, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. Run ads to promote your channel and gain subscribers so that you can get monetized and make your money back. Hmm. Go on YouTube and every once in a while you'll see a little thing that pops up and say, hey, do you want to promote your videos? So what you do is you go create an ad and the first time going through it, you're like, oh, well, you can actually Google YouTube videos that will step you through doing it. Uh, like do a Google search on uh, running ads to promote your channel. And what you do is like, for example, I do power apps. So what I would do for the, I don't do this anymore or I don't do it right now, which I, I went out and I created, um, you know, for any new video I was going to create, um, I would spend like a, a budget of like $2 a day. And, or I would say, I'll pay two pennies for every person that clicks on this video, you know, and lo and behold, you know, if you've got some extra money, sometimes Google will say, Hey, if you spend 500 bucks, you get $500 for your birthday or anniversary gift, or maybe you saved up some money and you're getting really serious. Think about this. You spend 500 bucks. Google will give you, uh, Google owns YouTube. Okay. Um, you spend 500 bucks, start using the service. They'll give you $500 free credit after you spend the $500. So you got a thousand dollars worth of advertisements. You set it up so that it shows your video for people who are interested in the keyword of the niche that you picked. People are going to be interested in your content, especially when you got a hundred crappy videos sitting around that they don't find crappy. They actually find it to be really good. Spend $500, get $500 credit, and then lo and behold, I make, um, geez, I have to look. I, I think I make $300 a month, okay, on YouTube. It just comes in every every month, and it gets deposited in, in my, my business account. Now, think about that. If you did that for a few months, built that up, and you start throwing out even more content. Uh, by the way, if you ever do any content, your niche is financial services, investing. Kurt, I know you know a lot about um, day trading. You just, if Kurt, if you were to do that, that is the most lucrative type of YouTube channels out there right now. Okay. Just saying, if just you know saying. anything about financial investing, anything like start creating some YouTube channels about it, uh, YouTube videos. Oh my goodness. You'll make, uh, it's my opinion. I can't guarantee. I can't make these <laughs> <laughs> claims oh you're gonna make all your money back i can't guarantee that guys please don't that's a, i got a disclaimer on that please no um no if, if i was in your shoes that's exactly what i would do at least to get started getting that those thousand subscribers and, and the four thousand watch time hours go live you're gonna get it don't expect to do it in two or three months make a year commitment to this guys if if you're serious about that this could be end up being a career for you it could completely change your life. Um, there's good things to be had, but you got to stick with like anything in adult life, uh, right, Kurt? But nothing comes easy in adult life, you know. May maybe when you're a child, you know, things are are given to you or whatever. But in the adult world, um, the the things of value don't come for you. You got to work at them. You know, I want to. I want to. I, I just want to pose a challenge for for everybody, for you and for everybody that's watching this, to try to remember, remember a time, have you ever watched your kids try to learn how to dribble a basketball or try to learn how to, how to kick a soccer ball? Remember when they were real little? And maybe you can remember yourself being little, trying to learn how to dribble that basketball or kick a soccer ball or something. And remember how long it took to learn how to do that. And remember how you watch your kids do that. They just keep trying and trying and trying and trying. And then ask yourself today, how long do you try to do something before you give up? Usually today, by the third time I try something, I can't do it. I can't do it. And I fail. I just accept failure. But try to remember when you were a kid, you never accepted failure. You just kept doing it because you wanted to do it. You just kept trying because you wanted to do it. You know, maybe that's what we need to be thinking about in terms of these, these channels. And this, this, you know, we, we, we just want to, we don't know how to be perfect at it. I don't know anybody does. But we just we just keep trying and, and working on it until we get it right. And we don't accept quit. We don't accept failure. We just keep trying, just like those children did, you know? Yeah, I just I don't know. For some reason that's just really 
um, when you were talking about that, I just, I see people, you know, um, trying it and then maybe not because they don't, they don't feel like they're doing good. They're not seeing the success right away or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Heard, have you ever heard of a guy named Mr. Beast? Mr. Who? Mr. Beast. I think so, but I'm not sure. He's one of the big, he might be the biggest, uh, YouTubers out there. Okay. Yeah, do, do, do a YouTube search on Mr. Beast okay. and then find about his backstory. So he was a kid and his mom wanted him to go to college. I think his mother paid for him to go to college and he wouldn't go to class because he was too busy making YouTube videos. That's all he wanted to do is just YouTube videos. And he's just obsessed about it. And now he is one of the biggest guys out there. He is a master at the thumbnails and the titles and the retention and his his niche is entertainment. He does like he started off by if you ever found any money, he would go and spend it on. So I think his first purchase was a microphone, and then um, he made a deal with somebody, and uh, he wanted to walk up to a homeless man and give the homeless guy uh, a bunch of money. And some guy, listen, we'll, we'll do this. I'll let you do this video. Here's 5,000 to do it. He goes, no, no, it's got to be 10,000. 10,000. Why does it have to be 10,000? Because 10,000 is like, if, if that wasn't, I gave $10,000 to a homeless person. Wow. Is like a hundred times better than, than saying, oh, I gave a homeless guy $5,000. No, just the 10, $10,000. That sounds huge. You know right. what I mean? Right. It doesn't right. make it a, a video that's twice as good. It's the twice amount of money. But just saying, I gave a homeless man to just psychologically, people see a thumbnail and maybe the thumbnail just has him like, hey, here's a bunch of money. Um, <laughs> and just seeing a grown man cry who's homeless, like, ten, like, how did that change that man's life? It's just a touching video. And yeah, just, just, Research this guy, Mr. Beast. Now, now there's there's a little. I'm going to give you guys a piece of gold here, and if you think about it, okay. People sell YouTube courses of how to start a channel, and it gives a lot of the the stuff that I gave away to, tonight for free. Okay, you could pay three hundred dollars for a course that maybe just goes over the things that I maybe they go spend more time about the exact equipment that they recommend. They, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that you can talk about with YouTube channels, with whole channels that has millions of subscribers that talks about this, right? Um, there's people selling courses for a thousand dollars or more about how to do YouTube channels. So, um, or you can go to YouTube search and type in Mr. Beast interviews or Mr. Beast explains how to be successful on YouTube. And you could piece together probably a hundred different videos or like 20 minutes of content that will give you all the gold, all the best advice. And he, and he actually said that in an interview, he goes, you know, you can go out and watch these courses and stuff, but I've done all the research. I've got all the experience. Somebody offered him a billion dollars for his channel. <laughs> he turned them down. He goes, well, maybe wow. 10 billion, maybe 10 billion. And, and the guy's like, I, I don't know. I think he might be still in his twenties, um, a billionaire. Like, <laughs> it just blows my mind. It is. Yeah, it's like, you know, if if you know, you could go down to the the country club and maybe get some golfing lessons from an instructor there that knows what they're doing, <laughs> or if your oh. uncle was Tiger Woods, maybe ask Tiger Woods if you come over for an afternoon, and you'd probably get better advice than this. And that's how I, I see Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast gives away free advice in these interviews. Go check those out. Yeah. And you, you might find that um, maybe over, over time I've picked up a lot of this stuff from stuff I've heard from him or other people, you know, for, for a good while, I was really obsessed over how to grow a YouTube channel and stuff. And at this point, it's sort of like, you know, it just sort of grows over time. Um, getting monetized is a really big deal. If you find out somebody's monetized or you finally get it yourself, hey, that's a big deal. That took a lot of work. So, uh, yeah, be patient. It takes time to build a successful YouTube channel. Don't get discouraged if you don't see results overnight. Just keep creating great content, promoting your channel, and eventually you'll start to see success. What do you think about that, Kurt? I think it's, I totally agree with it. 
getting anything helpful out of this, a comment or even a like really helps the channel and that's people like you know this is good content. Much appreciated. All right. And now, I that comment. I've got one more thing to share with you guys. For some reason, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video next. Let's see if they're right. Or you can select this playlist, which I've selected for you based on the content you're currently watching. Guys, got to hurry. Click one of them. Otherwise, YouTube's going to autoplay some other video.